These new NVIDIA cards have me feeling some kind of way. Good stuff, not bad. And I've got a strong, like, Pascal vibe here. And Pascal had me so excited because of the price to performance values they were touting. And I have a pretty good feeling we're gonna feel a similar kind of way with the launch of Ampere. So let's talk graphics cards. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, snag an OEM license from SCD Key. You'll have a fully activated OS in seconds and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for that sweet discount. Let's we'll jump right into it. First up, we've got the RTX 3070. This is a $499 card NVIDIA says is quote, faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. And for those of you who don't know, the 2080 Ti was a $1,200 card. And the keyword there is was because I expect a huge degree of Turing depreciation, similar again to what Pascal did to Maxwell cards. We have no idea what this metric compares, whether it includes RTX on or off, or whether we're even talking about raw frame rates here. But either way, it's got me pretty excited. I, I don't imagine NVIDIA would make such a bold claim if it wasn't going to at least somewhat hold up in court. And what I think has ultimately brought this price down so far from Turing is production and yields. When I mean price down, I mean obviously 2070 to 3070, the price hasn't changed, uh, but the performance that we're getting per dollar uh, has definitely increased. So I guess I should word it that way. Uh, but if we're getting 20 DTI performance for 500 bucks, I mean, what does that say about yields? Part of that may even have to do with the release of super cards being launched midway through previous generations. So the RTX 3070 from a value perspective, in my eyes, has me super excited. It isn't as cheap as we've come to expect from say Pascal, whose 70 series card launched for around 400 bucks. So the GTX 1070 was, was just legendary for its price to performance. But if we're getting anywhere near 2080 Ti performance, even if we don't come like, you know, up to that level, but we're pretty darn close to it in most games, I think that's a win for us at that price. And by the way, that's gonna be a serious kick in the teeth for us Turing guys, rip our resale values, am I right? We're also looking at eight gigs of GDDR6. Now I'll admit here, I was a bit disappointed given how powerful this card's being touted. I mean, can you imagine an RTX 2080 Ti with eight gigs? of VRAM, I mean, just, to me that, that makes no sense at all. Uh, but I think this is intentional. I think Nvidia is doing this to kind of chop off the 3070 card at its knees and kind of keep SKUs a bit more separated from a performance perspective than they otherwise might have been if it was given the same amount of memory and at the same speed as uh, the RTX 3080, which was announced next. That's a pretty good segue. So the frame buffer here has been bumped to 10 gigs, GDDR6, which I believe is about twice the memory bandwidth of regular G6 memory, though traditionally memory bandwidth bottlenecking hasn't been a concern. I mean, <laughs> that being the bottleneck in a graphics card would be a super weird way to approach it. But anyway, but check out that price, $699. This is RTX 2080 territory, so nothing crazy from an 80 series price perspective, but think of it this way. If the RTX 3070 is even as fast as a 2080 Ti like Nvidia claims, imagine how much more powerful an RTX 3080 will be. It reels in a 50% teraflop bump over the 3070 across the board from shader, RT, and tensor core perspectives, and it's the first one you'll likely be able to buy, available September 17th, 2020. And a quick note on this card's design, do you see that super weird supplemental PCI power connector? Yeah, uh, good luck with that. Comes with the territory, I suppose. Uh, and there's also those who will suggest that this card consumes a pretty healthy amount of power for NVIDIA to have to kind of break the PCI supplemental standard there, going with that uh, weird pinout config. But then NVIDIA surprised us with another card announcement. I actually stopped recording the moment they quit talking about the 37. That was the second card they had launched, or that they, uh, they kind of showcased, and I thought that was it. I didn't think it would go anywhere else. Traditionally, it's been a two card launch up front. But no, they had to go above and beyond with the, I said GF in the script, I don't know why I did that. BF GPU, this is what Jensen called it. The BF GPU packed into what they're calling the RTX 3090. Now I can't quite fathom how powerful this card will be at first glance and judging from the T-flop values, it doesn't appear to be like an insane step up from the 3080 just from a GPU perspective, but the memory, holy crap, 24 gigs of GDDR6X. What, what you'll be doing with that memory, I have no idea. I saw this in a few of the rumors and I honestly didn't believe it because it just seems so out there compared to what we expected the RTX 3080 to have. I mean, that's more than double the frame buffer in a card that only has, what, six extra T-flops of uh, shader performance built into it. I, I don't 
see this really adding up. I'm not sure what Nvidia thought the applications for this card were gonna be from a consumer side of things. I mean, they're they're marketing this in the same lump as the 3070 and 3080. So I wanna say they're you know advertising this to gamers, but what games are gonna fully saturate 24 gigs of VRAM before the GPU starts crapping on itself? That to me, I feel like people are gonna like, oh, you haven't played Skyrim with a thousand months. I know, there's people out there, I'm sure, but just the use cases seem very, very narrow. And then check out that price, honestly not surprised in this case, $1,500. And that's just for the reference model. I mean, look, can you imagine board partners charging you know, custom board markups with their custom coolers? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw $2,000 RTX 3090s from the likes of Zotac, EVJ, and MSI. And that would be unprecedented in, unprecedented, unprecedented in the consumer space. I mean, Quadro Titans, sure, all day, but they aren't marketed as gaming cards per se. Not that Nvidia expects loads, again, of gamers to go out and spend $1,500 on a graphics card to play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be surprised uh, what kind of crazy things people do with their cash. So those are the things that uh, really caught my eye during this launch. I, I could have also talked a bit more about uh, the RTX voice features. I think they, they refresh that and it, it does look incredible. It sounds incredible, I should say. Uh, also, they kind of deleted green screens from existence. That, that technology seems uh, to be pretty good. Although again, in their environment, it's probably gonna be ideal. Uh, so we'll, we'll test that out ourselves and see if in fact it does kind of crush you in such a clean way that they presented it in the Twitch stream. But anyway, I cannot wait to get my hands on them. Stay tuned for those reviews and uh, future builds for those cards as well. If you guys enjoyed this quick little video, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Leave a comment down below, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.